This was going to be a full review of the GTX 555, and in case you don't know what that is, I don't blame you. It's an OEM card used in Alienware X51 some years ago, and uh, it's like a GTX 550 Ti, but with uh, it's a bit faster with more CUDA cores and such. I got this card off eBay from um, a seller called Central Valley. They work off eBay and sell mostly used computer parts. Uh, they have some bad reviews out there, but eBay usually takes sides with the buyer, so I wasn't too scared of getting ripped off. Uh, and this was about 55 bucks. And a while back, I bought this card, a Sapphire HD 777 GHz edition off eBay for about $35. Uh, some woman was selling it, and for about 42 and I live nearby, so I was able to snag it without shipping. So 35 bucks for a 7770. That's a pretty good deal. Which leads me to actually a few points. If you're going to uh, do a build or a budget build, it's not a terrible idea to look on eBay or Craigslist for some used parts. Again, these two cards have similar performance, and I got, well, I got this one for 30, uh, $35 and this one for $55. I think I just wasted $55, though. Now to the point of this video. Now, and now to the point of this video. Ugh. Ugh. And now to the point of this video. A few years ago, uh, the five or the 7770 and a 550 Ti were compared a lot. So I wonder how a 555 and a 7770 will compare against each other through a set of benchmarks. Sounds appetizing. And this could also be as well a Team Green and Team Red review in the same video. Woo. Let's start with a 555. It comes with a blower style cooler, which keeps the rest of your case cool of its air but uh, it actually does get a bit hotter because it uh, pulls in the air through this little fan and it blows it out through the back while a card with a bunch of fans on it like so will get the case a little bit hotter but it will keep the video card a lot cooler. The card isn't too pleasing to the eye however it does look a bit outdated and uh, there are some scratches on it that make me want to throw up a little bit um, and the PCB on the back is green, so while it's in your case, it makes you want to vomit a little. The Sapphire HD 7770 GHz Edition is a smaller card, and I do like it. I like this cooler a lot more. I think it's awesome, and it definitely stays a lot cooler. Spec-wise, they both compact with a whole gigabyte of GDDR5 memory! Oh, this one clocked at 914 MHz versus... I forget. I'll put it on the screen, certainly, though. And 288 CUDA cores versus 640. 40 stream processors and a core clock of 736 megahertz versus a whole gigahertz of course and the memory is on a 192 bit bus on the 5555 and a 128 bit bus on the 7770 they both require a 6 pin and both are SLI or crossfire ready for up to two cards and I would recommend a minimum of 400 watt power supply for both of these uh, one might be able to take less but they are both kind of hungry for power I've also overclocked these cards to the max, um, with this one having thermal limitations and this one having power restrictions because I did not tweak a voltage at all. The GTX 555 gets hot, like stupid hot. It usually stays around 70 degrees Celsius, which usually is like my max temperature I'll let things go. And once I let it sit on a game by accident and it got to 90 degrees Celsius, that's 194 Fahrenheit. Well, um, this card stays at 60 max, about that, maybe 64, you know, a lot cooler. So the 7770 looks a lot better, it certainly is on paper. So let's put it to the test. The benching computer will consist of an i5-4670K at 3.4 GHz stock, so it actually does triple to 3.8, and 16 GB of 1600 MHz DDR3 RAM. And we're beginning these tests with Fallout 4 with medium settings at 900p with four samples of anisotropic filtering running FXAA. The 555 beats minimums, but the 7770 wins on averages. So when we overclock each card to 50 megahertz, both on the core and the memory, we now see that the 5, 555 comes up in three FPS averages and the 7770 comes up on the minimums and 1PS on in the average. And finally we overclock these 130 megahertz on the core each and 75 megahertz on the memory each. We crank the settings to high now with 8 samples 
of anisotropic filtering and we kept the FXAA at the same 900p. And the cards were very similar, but the 7770 got 1 to 2 FPS higher on the minimums and averages. So that's one major point for the card. And actually, the winner of these are going into the next build, which you'll see probably next video or so. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to try to make it my best video I've ever done. Uh, which is not saying very much, actually. Now we're testing Tomb Raider on high settings at 1680 by 1050 because that's the resolution the 550 Ti was aimed for when it came out. This game um, is where the 555 beats the 7770 even though it's just a couple frames per second which is actually really weird because uh, Tomb Raider is an AMD uh, kind of gaming evolved uh, game, you know? So I feel like this card would do better and this one wouldn't because usually AMD cards do better on their games and video cards do better on their games, like games with GameWorks and video cards usually destroy. But like, good example, my R9 280 that I fried. Oh yeah. And the um, GTX 970 and the computer currently, um, they played, I think, yeah, Tomb Raider, and this one did a lot better than the 970, and the 970 is a better card in general, so that was pretty weird. I'm gonna wipe my spit off. That's kind of disgusting. Shadow of Mordor, unf oh, God dang it. Shadow of Mordor, unf uh, Shadow of Mordor, unfortunately, was not tested because of the one gigabyte VRAM issue. Um, it is recommended for low if you only have one gigabyte of uh, video memory. So that kind of sucks because it's a very RAM hungry game. So we didn't test that because we know it'd just look terrible and have all right decent FPS. I thought I'd test Skyrim, a late 2011 game. Because the 555 came out early 2011 and the 7770 came out early 2012. I thought I'd test a game they should be perfect for. I didn't test with any mods but I, I was playing at Ultra at 1080p. I benched the opening part where Alduin attacks Helgen. Uh, because I feel like there's a lot of explosions and fire and, and uh, a nice place to see if your computer can actually handle Skyrim. Oh yeah, this card just completely stomps the 555 by the way. Lastly, I tested the GTA 5, which is where the crutch of both of these cards show, the video memory. I was stuck at 1366 by 768 which is the common laptop resolution. And uh, because I can only allocate up to 1 gig of memory, and uh, so the game didn't look very good at all. It was I was bordering the one gig of allocated possible memory. So the game looked terrible, but I had over a hundred FPS. So I couldn't turn up the quality even if I wanted to because of the VRAM issue. And for the conclusion, I have to award it to the, the HD 7770 because it runs cooler, it looks nicer, and it's just, it runs, the game is better. I'm going to be using this in uh, the build coming up next week or so. I'm probably going to, it might be a very late video because I'm going to try to work super ultra hard on it. But you can't expect a vlog or two because I did hit 150 subscribers. Uh, but I did promise to release more information at that point, so you can probably see a video maybe Saturday, Sunday, I don't know, and then you expect the build to be a week after that because I'm going to spend a long time. There are uh, some more people helping on that and uh, it's going to be a pretty great build. So stay tuned for that guys. And just to really mess with you, I'm going to lick this again. <laughs>